So can you talk about adapting comic book, the comic book medium to the film medium? Sure. Um, one of the most interesting things about adapting the comics medium into the film medium is the difference between adapting a novel, mm -hmm. say. Um, and one of the major differences in the past has been that there hasn't been a stable text. You know, Batman when uh, or Superman when it first came out. You drew on forty years of material. Batman drew on fifty years of material, um, and so there isn't. You know, even though even when like with Batman Begins, they draw on specific texts like um, Batman Year One. You can't directly compare the book or the, the film rather to a book. The way you could would say Pride and Prejudice. But recently, you know, sort of since Ghost World, like Ghost World, Road to Perdition, History of Violence, things like that. Um, there's been this shift towards having a specific text. Uh, and in fact, that's what I'm, I'm teaching a class this summer called Comic Book Movies. Mm -hmm. And it's specifically about uh, teaching films that have been adapted from specific texts. It's sort of a literature and a film class. Mm -hmm. And it, it's funny because when I teach literature and a film or like that, what I like to do is I actually like students to watch, the, I like to watch the movie first and then read the book. Mm -hmm. And that's because I, I feel like it, it eliminates a lot of the questions, especially if, you're, if, you're, if you have a class where people don't come out of a background of, they're not literature students, they're not English majors. Mm -hmm. you know, and it kind of eliminates a lot of the sort of questions about like, what happened, and you can, you can um, it's a pre-reading technique, essentially. And it actually privileges the, the book, because you lead up to the book rather than leading down from it. And also, have you ever, have you ever noticed when you, when you read a book and then watch the movie, how do you feel about it? <laughs> yeah. Right? You yeah. know, it's like, oh man, it, they, what they didn't, what they got wrong. Whereas when you, you ever watch a movie and then read a book? Yeah. And you come off like, oh wow, you know, it was, what, you know, the book expands on the movie, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more interesting, and it changes the way you read the book. With, with the comic book, obviously you have the visuals to begin with. Yeah. So your, your interaction with the text is different. So then the question is, how do they bring the comic book to the screen, right? And I actually just uh, emceed the graphic novel adaptation film festival in uh, um, in Lakeland Community College, set outside of Cleveland, and we we talked about that because one of the most faithful translations mm -hmm. is Sin City, yeah, right. And yet, Sin City, the comic book, is really this noir. It's serious and, and sort of it, it's kind of inflated noir, but you don't laugh at it. Yeah. It's not comedic. But the movie is comedic mm -hmm. because watching characters say those things and, um, and do those things, it, it comes off as humorous in a weird way. You get, you get so distanced from it. With things like Watchmen yeah. and now what yeah. we're talking about with kick -Ass, that's different because you've got, um, you know, you're going to have a faithful translation and you've got characters that you accept as characters. And, and, and so that's getting much closer to sort of novelistic adaptations. Mm -hmm. But again, you've got that difference, you know, um, that you've already got the pictures. Um, and so in many ways, they can come a lot closer. A comic, an adaptation of a comic book or trip can be actually an adaptation. It can be a lot closer. With comic books also, because, you know, Kick-Ass was like six issues. Yeah. So you could basically film that. Right? You could film everything that was in the comic book and put it up on the screen. I think one of the things that Hollywood has sort of learned is the Neil Gaiman rule, that if you please the fan, mm -hmm. you'll please the public. Yeah. They have to think about adaptation differently. And in fact, I know this is a friend of mine, uh, Brooke Kiesling, she um, is with uh, New Deal Studios, and they make uh, miniatures. In Dark Knight, the lower Wacker Drive, where the, where the um, garbage truck crashes into the Batmobile, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all miniatures. Yeah. It's big miniatures. Yeah. I mean, the Batmobile's like eight feet long, but it's all been, they built 200 foot tracks. You know, she said that actually, that, that they have to think about fans. Whereas when they're doing another movie, they don't. You have this built in audience that cares. And in fact, Comic Con, San Diego Comic Con, has turned into this big focus group. They'll try to get buzzed by bringing things there, but they also do this thing where they show clips from the movie and they yeah. talk about what they're doing, and then they monitor Twitter and they monitor blogs. Mm -hmm. And they actually will throw out ideas that they don't know if they want to do or not, or they'll throw out rumors or stuff and see how the audience reacts like in real time. Mm -hmm. Because people are live blogging and live yeah. twittering during that, but then by the end of the day, you know, they do that at three o'clock, by nine o'clock, they actually have this 
huge pile of data about how people are going to react to things, about what people like, what people didn't. Mm -hmm. And so that's different too. I mean, you don't see them going to Jane Austen conventions <laughs> and saying, oh, here's what we're doing, yeah. you know, as if to get their approval or their buy-in. Michael Chiklis talked about that with the Fantastic Four movie, mm -hmm. that they went to Comic-Con to get buy-in from fans so that they'd get word out, um, and then that would affect you know, ticket sales. With Kick-Ass specifically, mm -hmm. You know, there are shot for shot, you know, a panel in the movie, you know, that are very, very close. There's dialogue. It's staying very, very close to the text. Um, so I think that's an interesting thing about it, because this one came out of, it was self-financed. Yeah. You know, the director went around and looked for the financing, and the director is a fan. You know, the director knows the material mm. um, and involved the, uh, the, the creative team. Mark Miller, that, it makes it, it's really a fan film. Comic book publishers are willing to take a chance on something because it, there, there's the possibility that it's going to sell to a movie and publishers like Top Shelf, you know, maybe the comics don't really make enough money to have a company, but with that money feeding in from Hollywood, mm. um, there is enough money, which means we get more comics. The thing is, is that, is that when you can feed it both ways, mm. It means that there's money in comic books. I can't remember, but it's basically an imprint um, at Marvel, yeah. where Marvel doesn't provide uh, uh, backing for it. Oh, right. I mean, they, they publish them, they distribute them, but they don't they don't pump them. Mm -hmm. Right. They they don't get out there and do so. It, it's it's not quite self publishing, but it, it it's sort of like that and. But that came out, and now the fact that it's made a movie, the next, and you know, they made Wanted into a movie, yeah. right? You know, the, you know, the next Mark Millar project at Marvel is going to be treated differently. Yeah. Right? You know. Yeah. And and because Marvel now has their own studio, of course, they're part of Disney. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, that's going to be worked in right from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, which means Mark Millar might get to make whatever he wants to make, right? Yeah. And and that you know was with Kick Ass that was good. This is a real, this is a Kick Ass comic book. Yeah. You know it, it's really an interesting story about a kid who, who you know wonders why aren't there superheroes? Why can't you become superheroes? And he finds out the problems with it. You know you get your ass kicked um, immediately. You know this is a great time to have this come along. And in fact, at the premiere of Kick Ass in New York a couple weeks ago. They did a special screening of it. You know, somebody showed up in costume. It was yeah. like, I'm a superhero, and everybody cheered. With a movie like Kick-Ass is that it, it comes out of, of a familiarity with the material and a respect for the material. And that's different. I mean, when, when the first Superman movie was produced, that respect was accidental. It just happened that Richard Donner liked Superman. Mm -hmm. and was a fan of Superman um, from growing up. They picked him because he had directed The Omen. You yeah. know? But the producer is that. I don't think they liked Superman. <laughs> the yeah. Salkins, you know, they had this very difficult relationship with the source material. They didn't get it at all. And it still happens. But recently, like, I don't think Ang Lee got the Hulk. You yeah. know, Ed Norton got the Hulk. And I think that's why the, the, the second Hulk movie was, really, was good, because it was rooted in a respect for the material. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really interesting they, the, the way they kept the, the, a lot of the stuff that they kept. Um, it's very faithful. The movie, from what I've seen, is very faithful, and yet it's also um, its own thing. Like yeah. I love the actress who plays Hit Girl. I think she just nails that. Yeah, she's amazing in it. But you know, I like a lot of the other actors, and I think Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I think Nicolas Cage movie. works well. Yeah. yeah, I'm actually wearing my my big daddy shirt. We have the graphic novel adaptation film festival. The um, you know, they sent a rep out. Yeah. Uh, to give us swag. Yeah. So I got the big daddy t-shirt. Like uh, I think it was a good choice because like I don't know if it was like a reference thing like his his thing in Superman Superman when they were originally gonna do that yeah. movie I, I think, like I feel like they were referencing that casting choice yeah. in this and like how yeah. how would he would have handled like being a, like being Batman or being Superman or yeah but I think he also took it because he, he has that real the fondness and respect for the material and so that casting shows that you know it's gonna you know it's gonna be a good move.